Um, one of my questions is obviously you went to Germany, you spent some time there. Um, when you think back to your time at, at Hertha Berlin, Berlin um, was there something different about the training there uh, that is different from your MLS experience? Um, was there something they were doing differently there than we're not doing here? Um, well, I think one, because I was training in Germany, everyone gives you the benefit of the doubt. Now you're in Germany. You know, I didn't change overnight. Yeah. But um, when you leave everything and everyone to go somewhere to do something, you give everything. So my concentration level, my dedication to the sport and lifestyle was, you know, increased threefold when I was there because that's the only reason I was there. So right there, you know, that's a big one. Two is, you know, I did have incentives to play, you know, financially, one. Mm -hmm. um, two, I needed to play to, to, to stay on the team and to be in the national team. Right. And then three, I think when I was there, I did learn, you know, I think a lot of people, you don't know how far you can push your body. And I think um, Bruce and Bob and the national team, they do a good job with Pierre, you know, pushing yourself. But, mm -hmm. you know, I've been on MLS teams where you practice twice a day, one day, and, and people start complaining. But, you know, in, in Germany, we did that two or three days a week yeah. and a lot of, you know, running. So I, I just think um, it's a lot of it has to do with the surroundings and how seriously maybe you take it. And, um, you know, 10 years ago when, when guys were making, you know, 24000 and and, you know, coaching camps all summer to get by, mm. not that it's easy or not that it's impossible, right. but it's harder to act like a professional you know, at that age, yeah. um, you know, when you're, when you're in that situation and when there are more rewards, it, it is easier, but don't get me wrong. In other countries, there, there are young players that really have to grind it out. Yeah. Um, they, you know, they really grind it out too. So, but you know, it's the risk reward thing. What's the, uh, was the culture in any part a challenge for you? I know that it was for Landon and he, he mentioned that, but, I mean, uh, did you enjoy playing and living in Germany? I mean, did you learn the language? I learned to love bratwurst, schnitzel. Right. You yeah. Know? Um, you know, I was in Berlin, which is just a total international city. So, yeah. you know, I had buddies that played for North Carolina, you know, so guys that I've been watching in college for years and uh, a lot of Americans there. And so that was cool. And our team was very good. And I was a lot older than him, so I was a lot more mature, uh, you know, yeah. off the field. Right. Um. So there's, you know, the leaving the house factor. And then, you know, when I moved to Nuremberg, the situation wasn't nearly quite as good. You know, our team wasn't that good. Yeah. Um, very more conservative German city. But at that point, you know, I was already comfortable in the country. You know, I had my friends. And, you know, I was 30 years old. So it wasn't like, you know, I was, you know, scared to be somewhere. You know, I already accepted that that's what I was doing. I was reaching my goals. You know, I was a professional soccer player and playing with the national team. So, you know, I, I embraced it at that point. Um, I, I got lucky. It was, a, it was a great situation that I walked into. Um, and I think being at D.C. kind of helped me, you know, develop. We had a, a very good team that I left. So it wasn't, you know, when I left, I guess what I kept hearing was, well, your situation is not like the other ones. Because when I was ready to come back, I was like, you know, People said, you should stay, you should stay. And I was like, no, you know, I liked it when I was here and I'm old enough. It's time to come back. And people said, you should stay. And everyone said, um, your situation before, not every team's like that. And I got to be honest with you, people were right. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I wish we had more time. We're running out of it. But I did want to get um, a few more questions in. And, and these are uh, a little bit more light. We, we call them the... Uh, six quick questions and uh, why we call them the six quick questions we still haven't figured out but um just these are the quick ones here the who is the quietest most soft-spoken player um on the united states men's team that you played right with? now no Was that I you play with? with yeah absolutely I don't know. I mean, I think everyone was in their own element. I can't answer that one. Okay, we'll just move on to the next one. Your your favorite uh, goal that you scored ever? Ever? Um, probably my first year in the in the MLS Cup final when I scored the goal and came off the bench and uh, 
um, and we came back and won the game. And, it, you know, this is tough, of course, after the heavy conversation we had, but the funniest former United States men's national team teammate you remember? Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you put um, Frankie Haydick, Clint Mathis, John Harks, and Eric Winnell in the room, it, it would be entertainment. <laughs> That's in great. which way? <laughs> what kind of entertainment? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just personalities, you know. Yeah. They all have big yeah. personalities. Who was the um, meanest, roughest, nastiest, toughest player you ever played against, whether it be MLS or in the Bundesliga? You know, um, I played against Dennis Hamlet when I was a forward, and I kicked him as hard as I could, and I walked <laughs> off limpy. <laughs> um <laughs> You know, I played against, you know, once I was a little overweight, we played Argentina, and Javier Zanetti was playing, like, right wing. And we were playing a 3-5-2, and I kept pinching in, and, and all of a sudden he was overlapping, and there was no cover, and I had to chase him, like, 60 yards four times. He dribbled all into the six-yard box, and Casey bailed me out once, and he hit the crossbar once. But that might have been the roughest day of my life. <laughs> well... I wish we had more time, Tony, because um, I have like a list of 10 questions here I, I didn't even get to. Most of them are MLS related. And um, so I hope you'll you'll consider coming back on at some point and, and, uh, um, and answering those as well. But I, I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank all the supporters out there. And, you know, I hope some of them stay positive towards the outlook of soccer in this country. They better because yeah. it's getting better. That's all I have to say. It is getting better, and uh, and you're 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 of course part of that process. So we want to thank you for that as well, Tony. Okay, thanks a lot again, guys. All right, have a great night. Thanks. Yep. Later. Okay.